Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your podcast's favourite podcast. This is the Waffling On podcast with me, Joe Waffle, uh, your host with the most. And my guest this week, or this episode, is the lovely Mr. James Fredham. Hi did I say your last name properly? Fredham, yeah, Fredham. yeah. Because I, I keep, I've said Fredmund for a very long time. No one can ever spell my second name properly. We used to get posts with uh, Jedum, um, <laughs> Tedum. Jedum? Z-H-E-D-A, or Zedum. It's, and across the, over the phone, my dad sounds a lot like me. And so you go, hey, it's Tedum. And they, they, all, it's it's then in the hands of the gods <laughs> with with what comes through. To be honest, so yeah, you're not the first. I imagine school. I imagine school assemblies when you used to get like certificates with it. Oh, I, they were always spelt wrong. They yeah. were always spelt and wrong. said wrong probably as well. Oh, probably yeah, yeah. I now go for them um, because, um, as, as yourself know, I used to live abroad, um, uh, and the ths can be hard in certain European languages. So I go for Tedum, which sounds. <laughs> Which sounds very Scandinavian, despite the fact I am not Scandinavian in the slightest. This is even my last name. Like, no one said it properly. Like, for a very long time, I said my name wrong. Like, I said Wassel. And it's not Wassel. It's never been Wassel. It's Wassel. I say Vassel. Oh, Vassel. Because <laughs> obviously, when my family came over here, my last name was spelt the European way. Probably W-A-S-S-A-L, maybe. It didn't have two L's and it didn't have an E. So they came over here and added it because there's two, there's a similar name, there's a similar English name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and that's why it's come down that way. But my family heritage is German. Uh, Hanover, that's east or west? Uh, it, it'd be the, the north, north to the west. North to the west. Yeah, northwest German. And then they went over to America for not very long. A month or two just before world war one <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah my mum did it and like they were in america for like two months just before world war one so they obviously knew shit was about to go down and wanted to go somewhere safe because they might be de- they might have died they were jews yeah um, that is that is the uh the trick of it all well my my, my family name is the other one i have i've got webster on my mother's side i was gonna ask this because your instagram is now webster goldstein Stein, yeah. yeah so i'm a i i'm um becoming a teacher and so i'm um Kids are not to be trusted, and Fedham is an incredibly rare name. There's like six of us. So if you if you Google that, we're done. Yeah. We're done. And so um, I now my social media uh, website is my mother's name, name Goldstein. I'm also Jewish uh, ethnicity, and so that is my um, uh, my one of my um, uh, family's second names that I've uh, used as well. And it's because you guys, so uh, everyone who kind of knows me, knows me as kind of like that they'd be able to find it but it means that no one else can yeah, find yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's why i've sort of that's why I, I was gifted the name if you could say that waffle when i was a child because no one could say my last name properly like i was in like reception and i think i've told this story in the podcast before because the story of my name but now and for years i didn't really get it because you know i was your name's your name in it do you know what i mean you know, one of the only things you really own sometimes um and then as I've grown older, I've realised, oh, it's actually quite cool to be known as Joe Waffle. It's a good stage name. It's going to be known for the podcast as well, Waffle on. Um, and even people at work start like to call me Waffle again, which is very jarring. But yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I like my last name. It's a very long, I've got a very long name. It's Joseph Frederick Vassell. It's like 23, 24 letters. I've got two middle names. So I'm, uh, oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, fuck it now. So, I've always uh, found it weird that people don't have middle names. Yeah, my um, my parents did the thing where they were each allowed to pick one. Basically, they're both I'm um, named after family members, yeah, which so. I think is very endearing. And I'm mm, very, yeah. very... My middle name's my great grandfather that died just before. I think she died. I think he died while my mum was pregnant. He was on my dad's side, so yeah. Well, I think he fought in the war. He was the right age, so yeah. Carry on, sorry. Oh, my, mine's a great uncle and then uh, a great grandfather as well. So it works out. You're not getting them because I'm yeah, trying, yeah. trying to hide. Well, I, I'm not that. <laughs> like I've nearly, I've nearly dropped my address on this podcast before. And so I don't mind my full name because you can't really do anything with it. You can pretend to be me. Saying that, yeah, I suppose I said this as well. Someone is, I think someone is pretending to be me. So I'm going to perform a podcast with the new consistent, which if you haven't listened, go back and watch. He's a very not cool guy. Um, I told a story about how somebody turned up at my house wanting to look at the um i can't remember what they're called now like, you know the christmas wreaths that go over like your mantelpiece yeah, yeah, yeah there's a special word for, there's an actual word for it and my mom answered the door because she was just coming back from shopping yes i am 27 and i still live with my parents fuck you 
Um, and he was like, oh, I've come to see these things that Joe Wassell is selling. Uh, and my mum was just like, my mum's like, I'll check because obviously I have my own business and stuff. So she didn't know what the fuck I'm doing to be honest. Um, so she thought I'd check. And be like, I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> and obviously I can't remember it. So yeah, someone has my name or yeah, either someone has my name and is just using it to sell Christmas wreaths for some reason. Or this guy went through my bins and found out because he quoted my full name and knew my address. That's that's a worry. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and I should have investigated it further because my next door neighbours have cameras on their car and stuff. Because they have two cars and they don't have a driveway. So they park on the road. Um, so I should have investigated more like I got his thing, but he hasn't been back yet. <laughs> it's what you think. <laughs> well, he's probably, probably going to listen to this right now. Sat in your back garden? Don't. Because I was... I was, cause I, I was because I think I'd done, I think I was drinking that before. It was like a Thursday. And obviously I used to do a pub, pub quiz on a Wednesday. Bartender life. Yeah, bartender life in it, pub quiz on a Wednesday. So I didn't have work. And then I was just so confused by this geezer. And I'm still really confused. But he's not been back, then fuck. Like I say. Yeah. So, so you were on about where, you, where did you used to live before here? Oh. You were in Germany for a bit, weren't you? Yeah, I've um, I've lived in a fair few places around the UK. Um, I suppose it was just, just a, um, raised in the north of England near Lancaster. Obviously, with my accent, also from London. Yeah, you um, went proper Cockney over the oh, yeah. over this lockdown, didn't you? Because <laughs> we, we used to work for the same company. And he didn't used to sound like this, ladies and gentlemen. He was. I wouldn't say. Well, I, didn't, I wouldn't say you had a Brummie accent. But you didn't have a Cockney accent. No, I, I have a relatively neutral accent. It, 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 it did. I spent uh, much of lockdown. What did you do in lockdown? Um, <laughs> that is like there is a section about that in every podcast I've done since lockdown. It's like, how are you coping? It's everything you know I mean? okay. Like, I feel like Doctor Phil. <laughs> or I, I was going to say Jeremy Carl, but Jeremy Carl never really helped people. Uh, yeah, I felt like Doctor Phil sometimes. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? I spent much of my time um, in the second lockdown working uh, in a van. Uh, around North London, uh, we put up for sale signs and you maintain that kind of stuff. And um, it was just something to do, something to do with my uncle's business. And you just bounce around North London. So you're going to end up just being a bit like, wee. But yeah, um, mum's a scouser, dad's from London, obviously not just London, a couple of other places. I'm a bit of a mongrel in mm. that kind of retrospect. I like that though. It's, it's a nice way to be. You get um, respect for different types of people like that. And then I uh, went to university in Leicester. Uh, I moved to Germany for a year. I lived in a place called Passau, which is like very southern Germany. Sorry to interrupt. I love the way you pronounce things. So nice. Because <laughs> I feel like... Because like I heard my voice before this, like testing levels and stuff. And I was like, do I sound like that? Because I don't think I sound... I don't, the, the voice in my head, or the voice I'm hearing right now, isn't the voice that you guys are hearing. Um... And especially with my accent, I feel like I butcher some things sometimes. But yeah, you have a, you pronounce it, you pronounce, your pronunciation is very nice. I, I often think I have to because one sometimes uh, my my language goes all over the place because I, I speak a couple and I try and maintain them, which causes me to like actively try and think in those languages. Mm. Which may but can be awkward if you're just wandering around Birmingham. Someone asks you a question, you're desperately trying to like just focus on thinking in German, and you go. Fast? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> s s so sorry. Well, going back, like I first discovered stuff like that. Like I was in, I, don't, I think I was in a revision session. So, like this is back at school. And there was a kid. I was in year eleven studying for my exams. I think it was physics. He wasn't very good at physics. There was a kid who stayed back, but he was like in year seven. But he was like a Greek national that come over here with his parents and stuff. And my teacher was explaining like the kid. I can't remember his name. He thinks in Greek, like he hears in English, has to translate it to Greek to understand it, and then translate it back into English to repeat it. And I was like, dude, that makes so much sense why people take time. I know it sounds really obvious when you think about it, but when I was like 15, I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you do that? So that is, I always view that as like the crux of learning a language. Mm. And like, because um, I've, I've learned a few, just... I was. Uh, I'll tell this story because it's there's a level of malice to it, and I do enjoy it. But I'm, uh, I was. Uh, I'm quite severely dyslexic, and when I was a kid, uh, I had to do French in school. My French teacher said to me, "She, she says you will never speak another language other than English. You hardly speak English as well." <laughs> um, like, 
and I, I really struggled. And now I, I, I my German's pretty good. My Russian's okay. My S Serbian, I can pick up on some Yiddish. Um, like obviously, I have English. I speak a little bit of conversational Greek, thanks to my dad, who, who also speaks a little bit of conversational Greek. And then, yeah, bits and bats, like a little bit of Hebrew as well. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> I can speak. But when, when I was in Germany, um, I lived there for, a, yeah, a year in Passau. Passau is beautiful. If anyone uh, wants somewhere, like, I think it's, like, my go-to place. It sounds like, from hearing the name and hearing you, it seems like it's, like, Bruges. It, well, you say that it's so it's it's on it's where the Danube is made. So okay. the old town is like a bar of a ship, and and it's very it's very quiet. It's, I think it's like the fourth biggest city, fifth biggest city in Bavaria, but it's still like tiny. Mm. It's mainly populated by students. The students are something like sixty percent of the population at some point. Like Coventry, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Coventry and Passau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I was because I did like a semester in Cov to do my masters, and then just had my four modules and it was so hard it was just, i think i could do part-time i'd do two for a semester instead yeah. of four. but i just spent a day because i'd never i'd been around it i'd been around cov to like to go to other places i'd been to the rico but obviously that's sort of on the outskirts of cov and i just spent the day my day of my induction when i went to get my id card i just walked down cov and it's it's not i mean i used to shit on it i still do because it's funny <laughs> um but yeah like 60 70 percent of people in there were students students Mental. and so that's that's the kind of that's the kind of place and i spent a year there i was invited over by the head of the slavic center to do my masters and he was like oh well you have to learn a language you have to, you'll have to um and the reason he managed to get me over i ended up doing a german course and learning russian at the same time never learn two languages at the same time it's an absolute nightmare especially when you're having to retrain your brain uh to speak cyrillic uh to be able to read in cyrillic now as this all happened, I walked away, I think with that, and I speak now pretty good German. And I would say, actually, with German, it's the only language, and maybe Yiddish, that if you say it, I don't have to do that translate mm -hmm. in my brain, that, that take of the word, translate it into English, think of what I would say in English, and then go through that. German, I will tick over. Mm -hmm. uh, Russian, Russian's a bit meh, hit and miss. And then I've also lived um, in Belgrade, in Serbia. So my Serbian, when I'm there gets a lot more after a couple of beers as well it gets a lot more like calm and a lot more like yeah everything's fine but german i would say is is my my closest one so i went over there it didn't go quite the plan because surprisingly you can't learn two languages fluently in a year i imagine they're two very different languages as well well within the theoretical front they're both indo-european uh, and that's pretty much all the, the 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 overlap you have so they're like they're both <laughs> they're both like they're from the same tree of languages or branch of languages and that that's it really like the the grammar is very different um how it all works is very different it did me you know the two things i will say is learning german meant that i showed that i could speak another language it helped me pick up my family have spoken a little bit of yiddish my uncle and dad both speak german and it meant that i could engage mm. and learn a bit of yiddish but it also meant that now i just pick up slavic languages really easily yeah. Um, my family many, 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 many years ago came from Ukraine. Well, what is now Ukraine? Um, many years ago. Um, and th that's cool for me to be able to, like, um, pick that stuff up. And, like, I can hear Polish spoken and I can understand little bits and bits of it. Um, similar with Bulgarian and Ukrainian. Mm. And Latvian and Lithuanian terrify me. But um, in general, yeah. So uh, I lived lived in Passau. I spent six months studying really hard and six months not studying really <laughs> hard. Welcome to my four years at university. Because I realised <laughs> I was going to leave. I was like, I'm not going to stay here. This is this is not. It, it went. It was great. It was a great time in my life. But I just spent six months hanging out with like four of my closest mates. Um, we were all. One of them was from La Paz in Bolivia. The other one was from near Donetsk in Ukraine. The other one was a Romanian lad who was raised in um, San Francisco. Okay. And he used to be a college footballer. And so just... For what position? Um, a linebacker. Oh, fuck me. Big fella, then. Yeah, huge <laughs> fella. Huge fella. Um, like, and classically chisel good looks. He'd just tower over everyone in the club. All the women would just... Just swore, like swoon. It's a pain, isn't it? Like... It's, you've got me that looks a bit like a bird. Mm. Uh, um, mm. Yeah. I mean, that's why I've grown some sort of beard, because my... My our facial features is it like I have a big nose, my chin sticks out a little bit. <laughs> I, I think we look like um, 
You know the bluebird from Muppets. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but I can say we're both ethnic Jews. So we it's, are it's sort of comes with a fucking territory, doesn't it? It, it? it does, it does, you know. you got to own it, though. you got to own it. You gotta come oh, I used to hate it. Like, I used to hate my face until I my eyes stopped working and I had to wear glasses. And I feel like my glasses have sort of rounded my face out a bit more. It's like, I look completely different with glasses on. I also can't see very well with my glasses. My balance goes, even sitting down. Um, so yeah, as soon as I got glasses, I was like, oh, I found my face now. Which is sort of sad. Sounds weird. This is my face. Yeah, this is my face. And then I start to grow some sort of a beard. My moustache is quite impressive, but the beard, no. I always, I always really respect. So I, I like a bit of designer stubble. I believe the hipster phrase would be said. I think it looks, it looks because. But if I grew a beard, I just look really Jewish. Mm -hmm. I just look really like big. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna keep. Have you watched Baby Driver? Yes. Yeah. You know John Hamm's character. Yes. Like he hasn't got like. Like, I don't know if he's got like a full moustache either. Moustache. Um, start saying the word moustache. Um, so yeah, I might go design a stubble on the chin and cheeks, but keep the moustache. Yeah, I might do that because it's just like it's patchy. It takes the piss to grow, and it's just like I feel. Some pictures are doing like the last picture I had took here. Look very nice. It all depends on lighting. It's all about light. Yeah, so it's I might just about... fuck the lighting off and just have design a stubble and just get the moustache, twirl it. That's becoming a fucking pain to do as well like I'm at, I do it really nice and I put a mask on to get on the train and I feel like you know when you've seen those pictures of masks when the girl's taking it off and it's just, all the makeup's on like the, yeah, yeah, yeah I feel like that and it's just like my moustache wax has gone into my mask and I have to sit on my toilet like, a hit, like somebody I used to hate this is the thing that I've discovered recently as well. I've become something that I hated. You know when, hips, you know when, hipsters, was first, you know when hipsters first became a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they drank craft beer and had a twirly moustache. Yeah. I now drink craft beer and have a fucking twirly moustache. And I'm just thinking... It's just a walking contradiction. I don't like it. Oh, you really... You... you. I mean, I do like it. Because it's me. But I just would look back at what I used to think and be like, I'm such a fucking idiot. You what got have I become? I've betrayed my... 13 year old self you go into it especially like so we've both been bartenders and um you go into it you like i'm never going to become that pretentious bartender <laughs> and in general no one ever does but you do become very pretentious over certain things certain drinks example, yeah. certain things like um, um i uh, i have like very strong opinions on vodka shockingly yeah from the, uh, the man <laughs> with his european heritage i have very strong opinions on vodka and uh, the thing is it's well you're talking to a man who also just enjoys cheap lager mm. uh, cheap oh, polish mate, lager uh, this is the thing but like we had the conversation because we're at my new place Burger brewing company go check them out some fantastic local beers brewed in uh, Sturchley. not by me thank god uh, but i do work there now um they where was i they we're hosting, we're doing some, we're playing, showing all the England games. I don't think bookings are open yet. They might be open when this podcast goes out, but, um, and they got what they called Steins out. And I was like, they're not Steins. Steins are made out of stone. They're called masses. Masses. Because they're made out of glass. And no one, no one cared. And they come back in, I was like, can we just call them masses, please? Because that's what they're called. And then we're like, Okay. And they come back in and was like, oh, where can I put the steins? I was like, stop it. Stop doing this to me. And I'm like, because I love my German beers. I love my Danish beers. My favourite beer of all time is Heineken. And it's, che it's cheap. I mean, it's not, there's cheaper beers. But in terms of lager, I think it's, is it cheaper than, it might be cheaper than Carlin, but that, like you can, bottles of Heineken are like four for a quid. No, four for four quid. So one a quid. And it's just like, I just like it. I, I don't. I had a favourite beer, but I can't drink it anymore, unfortunately. So it it, it, it goes it goes between them. Uh... Is it to do? Is it the, because of the way it's brewed? No. So it's Tisky. Um, so Tisky Polish beer. Um, really interesting story. They got taken over by um, Coors, I think it was. Who also owned Peroni. They went and sorted it all out, and actually now Tisky is a decent beer. However, um, to anyone listening, um, their owner. Or oh. also is a vocal supporter of the LGBTQ free zones Ugh. in Poland, Ugh. Uh, and so people there, there's an argument: well, boycotting it means nothing. You're one man, which is fine. But for my own morals, oh, it's really, yeah, your own moral thing. I get morals, that. I can't, I can't. That. So I'm now on the hunt. If anyone knows a good cheap Polish lager that <laughs> can be my new favourite beer, because <laughs> well, I asked because it's brewed because I discovered something about brewing. Because obviously you're Jewish, you can't, you don't eat pork. 
No. Some things are not filtered with, I think it's something to do with pork. Yeah, so uh, usually it's fish guts. Fish guts, that's the one, yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah. going to say fish guts. But I was, so I was, often I beer isn't vegan yeah, yeah. Um, because of this. Uh, I mean, on the on the kosher front with me, it, it's more um, like lots of things aren't kosher, theoretically. Mine is more just an act of kind of solidarity to ancestry. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, I, like, I'm slowly giving up pork as well. I'm a, I usually don't eat shellfish, but if I'm by the sea, I will have some crab because mm. they're great. Yeah, but, my mate's like that. My, the guy I work with, he, he's a full veggie. Um, he can eat, obviously, as a vegetarian, you can eat fish, but he doesn't because we're in Birmingham. Yeah, that, that it's, is. It's not from here. But if he's on holiday in Cornwall or in South of France or Spain, he, he will because it's he can see where it's come from which i totally agree with i think that's fantastic i think most on the beer subject though most beers now are phasing out using fish guts because it and it, you you make a really good point about how like when you're a teenager you see all these hipsters uh and you think oh i'll never be like that it's the same with veganism mm. like in the early 2000s you would never thought my parents would never have thought that they would be living like a vegan lifestyle they thought it was strange they now hardly eat meat yeah they, they, they've gone they've gone and it's it's now the norm the what is nice is the pretentiousness has almost been taken away from vegans and veganism not vegans but veganism and yeah. so it's way more accessible and you can get so I, I seem to remember red stripe at one point which was served in a bar that I worked in, they used to use fish guts in their process. And it's something to do with cleaning, I think, or something like this. My, bre my brewery knowledge is poor. I think it makes it clearer, if I can remember. I've only been told this once, but I, we have a hit. Obviously, we brew our own beer at Birmingham Brewing Company. It's also vegan and uh, gluten free because we just we don't distill it with fish guts, we distill it with something. Oh, filter it with something else. I think it makes it clearer. Mm. So our beers are. A bit hazier yeah because of that don't do really do anything to the taste it's just a look yeah so lots of things lots of things um are added or taken away just for look it's amazing mm. like for sales but with the rise of microbreweries and stuff like this which has been over the past 10 years uh and he's even like um i had mentioned to you before i used to live in belgrade as well and shout out pars and belgrade shout out pars and sam belgrade <laughs> Fox of Venezuela. Oh. That's what I have to say. Uh, um, but there's a huge beer scene over there as mm. well, like microbreweries and stuff like this. Um, and it's just everywhere. So I think as people come again, more and more kind of used to this notion of hazy beer or stuff like this, you know, it's not clear. It doesn't mean it's terrible though. It doesn't mean the lines are bad. It's just the way it is. Hopefully we'll see more and more, uh, mm. more and more. Will we do a hazy beer? Mm. So if it's hazy, it's super hazy. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, even our sober beer is really nice. Because I, like, oh, I went teetotal for six months. No beer. No drugs. Uh, I went. I tried to go ve vegetarian at the same time as well. Which was free. It was a hell. Um, but yeah. It surprised, I surprisingly have a nice taste for a non-alcoholic beer. I think this is the other thing. Um, that's another point that, that, that often is just demonized, like non-alcoholic beer. People just expect it to taste like Heineken Zero is it's, it's fine if you just want one something and you, you, you've been dragged That's out. what I used to drink. And I've quite, I tried other non-0%. Um, the Erdinger's not completely 0% or the alcohol free is like 0 0.05 or something. That's really nice as well. None of the, none of the Germans, because uh, I always say my, my brother went teetotal recently uh, and... Um, I always say the German ones are the best because mm. I believe the way they make it is they brew the beer the way they would and then they heat it up and get the alcohol off it. Oh, okay. Which is why it's still got there's there will be trace amounts yeah. and they can't guarantee it. Well, it's zero. like it's like um, disinfectants and it? it's like yeah. ninety nine percent because it's just saving them from yeah, yeah. Law, not necessarily law. I don't think it would be lawsuits from beer, but yeah, same sort of thing. Yeah. So um, uh, you still get the taste though. It means that you you're getting all that like good stuff. So. I think that's the best. I always go for if anyone needs, wants an alcohol free beer, always go German. Mm. Always go German. Always go German. And put it in a mass, not a Stein. Yeah, put, uh, it, in, <laughs> put it in a mass. <laughs> Fucking uncultured swine. They do that they do that every um, um twice a year, you know, the beer festivals in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. It's uh everyone talks about Oktoberfest loads. It's not even in October, is it? Um well it can it can be, but <laughs> it, it, it yeah, it does depend because it's a seasonal thing, it's all about yeah, seasons. Yeah. Uh but they have one in spring as well. And my best advice 
if anyone out there wants to go to an Oktoberfest, okay, go to Munich Oktoberfest. Probably not. It's not happening this year, I don't believe, but next year. But if you really want a proper, like, experience, Bavarian experience, go to the ones um, that are happening in the other cities. Go to Regensburg, go to Passau. Um, I don't know about Augsburg. Those one, I, I believe they're, they're also in Bayern. But, like, go to the smaller towns and cities. They'll have, I went, as I said, Passau, not a big city, but huge beer hall. Yeah. Huge beer hall. Well, that's what, like, I don't know if it goes back to, I don't know if it, I don't know if they pick something off the Vikings, but they usually have their longhouses, where obviously their chiefs and, no, yarls, sorry, not chiefs, their yarls used to live. They used to just turn into drinking also. I don't, I, it's a, it, the pub has always been a hub. Do you know what I mean? So it's, I'm not surprised. Oh, yeah. Um, throughout, Throughout history, like alcohol has been a, a key key factor to, to a lot of stuff. Um, like the fact that we have booze in the distillated booze and stuff like this indicates that at some point in time we've had excess food, mm. and that's why it was made. Uh, well, there were other lots of other anthropological reasons, but yeah. So um, it, it's nothing manifests that better, I think, more than Bavaria. You know, I, oh, yes. I loved it. It was um, <laughs> it is such. I had some. Crazy stories from uh, from those beer halls, but uh, in general, very good fun. Do but, tell, yeah, do tell. Um, well, you know, so I went, I went a fair few times actually, and I always try and go. As so, Passau in general, which is what I was going to say before. It's my like, if you've been dating a girl or a guy or someone for like three or four months, you want to go on a long weekend, you got to Passau. Ooh, you got to Passau. Ooh. It's really easy. You get off the plane at Munich. You uh, get on the train. Uh, it's about two hours on the train. I bet the trains. Are, I bet it's a really nice train journey, though, isn't it? Very efficient. Mm. And then, yep. It's German in it. Everything's efficient in German. Everything's on time. Everything's on time. Um, yeah, really pretty. And then it's just <laughs> a lovely, like, calm town that you can wander around. As a, and the thing is, one of my exes, my if she is listening to it, she's like, "Oh my god, he you do that with me!" Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I call every boss I've ever had boss, even after. Yeah. Like if they're working in a new venue. I'll call them boss. I won't call them by name. So my new boss, I always call her boss. And then she found out I did this with all my old bosses. She was like, you what? <laughs> you do that to everybody. I was like, yeah, it's just a sign. I got that from, I think Beckham still does it with uh, Sir Alex Ferguson. I think everybody, or, uh, it might be Ronaldo. It might, it might even be Ronaldo. I don't know. One of them. I didn't, it was like, I still call him boss. I was like, I still do that. You know, if something something works, if something works, don't question it. No, no. And so yeah, we would. I would go a lot. And yeah, do do go to Passau. Great date. Uh, well, great like long weekend place. But we go to the the beer halls at the top of this hill, and um, you will be given your uh, your mass. Um, you pay about ten euro for a liter of beer. It's fest beer, so it's a higher percentage, mm -hmm. about seven eight percent. Mm -hmm. It's sweeter. Um, yeah, we were talking about Fest Beer before. Everyone. Yeah, it's just designed to go flat and warm yeah. and still taste amazing. I had um, with my first time there, I went up with my dad who drove me, drove me to Germany from the north of England. Uh, like the 16 hours, he, he, uh, John Thedham is a, uh, is a, <laughs> is a legend. <laughs> Um, he also just adopts he, deep down he's just an aging Jewish man because he just adopts people he's like oh they can be part of our family mm. now so if there's any issues it's just like yeah no well, you're all... going back to it like I'm so a German Jew when I think about it because <laughs> I like my efficient stuff I'm also very well you know what I mean like, I'm so, like I didn't realise this until because we only really I mean we work together sort of in different in sister venues we only really start to talk over the lockdowns and stuff and I've, just, I've generally realised that I am completely a German Jew <laughs> like it's just I've, a yekka yeah it just sticks with you wherever you go and i love it i am who i am carry on your festival story no um, well it's 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 well well suited i mentioned my dad because he um we went out with my friend that uh, i had a very old friend who lived there for a period of time and i've known her for years and years and we went up uh it was like a wednesday night it goes on for a week these these um as everything should. as everything should my dad has like I think he has one liter of beer. He's a small man. He used to he used to live a life of the life, the mad old life. You know, he had me <laughs> quite late, in, and he got married quite late. And you know, he's he's just an idol of a man. Uh, but, but he begins just to accumulate people around him on these the, these tables, begin, and he just begins to to talk and almost hold sermon. Mm. He, these there was the a wonderful group of um, 
Pakistani and Kashmiri guys on the other side. My dad spent a lot of time in Kashmir walking. Obviously, now it's really hard. It really upsets me. Can't really go. The political situation in that area of the region, uh, in that area of the world is really hard. Uh, and he just began to tell stories. And these guys, about 23, 24, and there's this 60 something year old man, English geezer, um, just telling them stories. And they're all, I'm telling my friends, I can't take him anywhere. Yeah, I cannot yeah. take him anywhere. Because <laughs> they're all like, oh my God, I can't believe that you know this, that you know that. Like, the first time ever, yeah. I, I, I had one bad experience in a beer hall in which I ran into an actual Nazi. I mean, you go into at least. <laughs> You're going to at least once in your life, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, mate. It's, it's, I'm going to say it's poor form on their part, but yeah, you go into it at least once. I always, always, so, um, the funniest, it, it happened at the end. We'd gone up for a student night, one of the student nights on a Wednesday. They say, oh, let's go get, get all the students in. And um, some of the, what they call, like anywhere, really. Um, How Nazi was, was this? Per I imagine well, it was a hack. I, I imagine it was a male. Yes, it was two of them. Normally, the always are. Well, um, uh, it, it, it also had a lot of locals, but a lot of rural guys mm. come in. And, you know, it's one of those things. It, it's just, you know, you get them everywhere in the world. Yeah, but these two lads which stood outside. Me and my mate chat to these two girls, as you do. Uh, uh, love and life. And these two guys just literally sig Heil in front of us. Uh, they don't really know that we're there, the sort of thing. But it's sorry, but no one does anything. No one moves. It's just, and then they do it again. I uh, I just go for them. So you should. And I got what my mate under one arm, mate under the other arm, and they're just dragging me out, and I'm just screaming, "You Nazi fuckers! Yeah. I'll fucking kill you!" And they're dragged out, and the security guard looks at them and goes, "Um, don't let him back in because we can't, can't, just, just don't." Take your friend home. We saw what happened. Just take your friend home. Three things uh, that I drew from that story is one, how genuinely f incredible the German people are. Because mm. I have people come up to me in English and apologize. Yeah. I didn't know. Mm. All, uh, all the guys, everyone just, we we're really sorry you saw that. That is not Germany. Please don't think that's yeah, Germany. Yeah. I, well, I, I, I do think, not. Yeah, I think that's that, like, because I think about, I, what, I, what I think about a lot is people I don't understand. And I don't understand how someone could hate someone for not being like them. And that mm. sort of like the extreme is Nazism, obviously. But I, it is a, a weird, I mean, not weird, it is a scar on German culture. Oh, definitely. And people do judge them for that. Like, I remember at school, because I had I knew about my German heritage at school. Sorry, I thought that's something I'm going to sleep there. Um, and I was called Hitler for a bit. I didn't really take it that personally, because I was see myself as English I, mean, I don't really see myself as any fucking national at the minute because it's I think all, it's just a way to not categorise people but just to call them stuff like mm. I know my heritage and stuff so yeah I didn't really take it personally but I probably wouldn't take it personally now but it's a weird dynamic if you know what I mean it is it is and I've seen it I've, so um, just a caveat, just to put a pin on in that story, just to say in general, well, in my time in Germany, I've spent a lot of time in Germany, um, talking to kind of people our age, people my generation, and there is still a hang up, and it is still a thing, and there is still almost collective guilt, but it also does cause a very, very small minority of people to be like, no, 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 it's not that bad. I had someone come up to me at a house party saying, oh, well, the Brits were as bad as the Germans, you bombed Dresden, and I was like, yeah. The we, we were we, we weren't great Dresden was not good but we weren't as bad as the Nazis but you should also say that's not you that's, yeah, yeah, that's not definitely you. not yeah, you yeah. and there is still like a real level of awkwardness I went to Hamburg to visit the same friend who lived in uh, Passau um, she was working there and um, I was around the dinner table for uh, one of her flatmates birthdays in, in the morning and they had it some German breakfast is delightful. It's cheese and meats and everything. Mm. They had me some all the good stuff. Yeah, had to be some like meat. I said, I'm really sorry, I don't eat that. Um, and they go, oh, oh, are you vegetarian? I said, oh, no, 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 uh, I'm Jewish. And there's a silence, an awkward silence. My friend who knows me really well just goes, yes, James is Jewish. Can we all just ignore the guilt and move on, please? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, that's fine. But with the beer, with the beer hall going down, I, one again, 
genuinely demonstrated Germany being a lovely place, mm. but it also demonstrated two things. It demonstrated the wisdom of my father, who wasn't there. This was, he was back in Britain. And, but um, he, I told him what happened, and Dad was like, this is really good that you didn't do anything, because um, he told me a story of when he used to work in Greece, and sometimes when you can be morally in the right, but you go again, you suddenly hit someone who's a local, you have a thousand people jumping on you. Mm. They don't know what's happened because all they see is an outsider attacking local. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it, when you're picking yourself up, pick, picking your teeth up, they can go, oh, well, you were in the right. But that doesn't put your teeth back in. Yeah, of course. But it also, I went to the gym the next day and I said, I said one of my best friends, a uh, guy called Artur, is from a town near Donetsk. He lived a mad life with that region. Fuck Donetsk. Long live to Netsk. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Again, football stories, because we'll, we'll probably mention this in a second, but we, me and James follow about 14 teams. Yeah, 14 it's, it's, teams. it's a fair yeah. amount. But, sorry, carry it, on. Ian, mate, we were in the, in the gym, and I, I told the story to, to my friend Mitch, who was the linebacker, and Arthur, and um, he turns to me and goes, James, I wish I had been there. We could have fought them together like great patriotic war. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Tor, you were the man I wanted for the situation, but definitely not the man I needed. Yeah. Uh, like, like, I definitely needed you to be like, come on, let's fucking kill them. <laughs> That's how I feel, though, because I know, like, go back, like, I feel, I don't, like I say, a couple of minutes ago, I said, I don't feel, I don't think you can feel, I'm going to uh, contradict myself here, but I don't feel that English. I was raised here, but I do feel Central European. Just knowing things about it. And it might be just like me being, me, glor me not glorifying, but there's a word for it, you know, me lusting after my old form, my life 300 years ago, or whatever it was. Um, but more than anything, I just feel human. Do you know what I mean? Identity is a really mad thing. I am, um, also, uh, Joe knows this, I spent um, 10 years in academia studying race, ethnicity, and genocide. Uh, really, really happy things to uh, like a PhD level. Uh, and you do a lot about identity with ethnicity, identity with race, and it's something I really feel like very comfortable on when talking about. Um, but in general, um, I think a lot of, um, I think everyone kind of strives to find an identity they're comfortable with. And this can be all sorts. This is not just race or ethnicity. Uh, it can be gender, sex, all sorts, all sorts of things. It can be... Um, Football teams. Yeah, all music. The age-old thing that Dennis Bergkamp said was, you know, you don't follow a football team because they're good, to paraphrase Mr. Bergkamp. You follow them because you found your, yourself in that team. And um, it's very true for me and James. Yeah. Because <laughs> we support some very... I mean, most of our teams are actually quite good. Just no one's heard of them. I mean, my local Ukrainian one are terrible, but we might get promoted to the Premier Division. So I'm looking forward. We're currently second, so we're taking on. But um, yeah, as long as as long as there's some the thing with like race and ethnicity, you need some form of um, physical or material manifest to tick the box. So, blood or heritage, or in in certain cases, embrace skin color and things like this. You big have noses. To be big big noses. <laughs> 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 we got enough to go around. Trust uh, me. Um, but yeah, so it's. it's Whatever that and whatever makes you feel comfortable within that remit, within that. You can't just say, I couldn't say, well, I'm Cameroonian. I have no link to Cameroon at mm. all. I've no, never even been there. wasn't even born there. There's no link to it. There's no material link. I don't think I could find it on a map either. I know some African countries. I don't know where Senegal is. I know where Ghana is because it's next to Senegal. <laughs> I don't know where Egypt is. But yeah, I have no idea of where it is. I have an idea of where it is. I think it's West Coast. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was more central. Neither me nor Joe. No, yeah, no, like Cameroon. if you ask me to find Senegal <laughs> on a map, I'll be able to tell you. One of my good friends, Mariam, is from um, Senegal. And she wants to, I need, I need to go at some point, obviously, when borders are back open. Um, or, yeah, when it's a bit more safe. Um, so, yeah, no, I get that. It's very interesting because it's one of those things, like, we're all connected by that. Oh, wait. Where, We've just found out where uh, Cameroon is. It oh, is West Coast. Really close to Senegal. It is quite close to Senegal. For the listeners, <laughs> we're just where, finding where, out where Cameroon is. Where's Senegal? Not, I thought you said you, you knew where. It's not there. <laughs> that means it's not there. <laughs> where's Senegal? Um, 
We will find out where Senegal is. Give so I was getting this. confused with the Ivory Coast and Ghana because one of my lecturers at uni is from Ivory Coast, which is next door to Ghana. To the people of Senegal, we apologise. It is still, it's um, just down from Mauritius, it's still the West Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't far off. I was four countries over. So I'm Only just... four countries over. It's like when people call me Polish. It's like, uh, well, uh, literally more Eastern. I, so, like, if I didn't have this accent, people could, well, cause I'm my accent is fairly thick, and especially when I've had a beer. People instantly know I'm from Birmingham, which is lovely, because I love this city. Uh, but if I was, if someone told me I was from Manchester, be very disappointed. <laughs> very disappointed. Manchester. Oh, Manchester. I, I was half, I was half considering doing an accent for that then, but I can't do accents. The, um, uh, the, the, the idea, you know, you, you said it's the wonderful thing about um, about England and Britain is the um, this notion everyone always goes, yeah, we're all British, we're all this, that, and the other. But if you ask any British person about their city or their their region, oh. They prefer it more than anything else. Yeah, you know, yeah. You call a manca scouser. Yeah, you're going yeah, to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you call um, in London, if you say, "Oh, are you from somewhere south of the river, and you're from north of the river," fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's weird, isn't it? Like, but it's, that's, identity again. Yeah, it's, just just say, it's not a problem. It, it can manifest as a problem, but it's so like ingrained in us because it. It's. I think it. It comes from like a defence sort of thing so if someone attacks birmingham usually for their accent even though it, even though it's not the accent they're thinking of you were immediately on like we're always def we're, but as a brummie i'm always defensive about something because i'm been vigorously attacked in popular culture for years i don't know what's the problem you know <laughs> <laughs> well it's the thing like at uni people are very shocked like I th again i think i've told this story on the podcast but it's very prevalent to I don't know, prevalent is the right word but yeah it's very interesting with the conversation like we did a core one of one of the week's lectures was about how to manage people from different backgrounds and ethnicities and stuff like that and how to not prejudge people which was a really cool lecture for a business course um and our lecturer was just like put your hand up if you've ever been if you have like an example not prejudice well yeah i suppose you would call it prejudice and my hand went straight up. She looked at me before my hand went up because she knew exactly, I knew exactly what she wanted me to say because there was other Brummies in my course, but my, my uni was, pretty, I think it was 60% international students, which was really cool because I got to meet people. Like I've got German friends now. I've got Miriam, Miriam who's a, from Senegalese. Who's Senegalese, sorry, not Senegalese. Um, I've got people from Korea, China, um, French and Spain. It's fucking awesome. Um, and my hand went right, right up and she goes, and I go, people think I'm stupid because of my accent, even though it's not my actual accent, they're thinking of a black, black country accent. And they were like, and every international student in there was just like, I totally get that because I thought, <laughs> I didn't think you'd sound like the way you do. I would think you'd sound like you're from what, what, they didn't really understand what the black country was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Dudley, I'm from Dudley. I got no neck and no future. From as Joe, as Joe, life. Yeah, as Joe Lice it says on. It's, <laughs> it's one of the funniest things he's saying. I got no neck and no future. Um, yeah, it's very weird, and I get why people get defensive with it because it's one of those key identifiers for people. Well, in, in the in the broad sense, you know, identity and and it, it's a prediction from an anthropological. It's it's dates back hundreds of thousands of years to when you could predict something so if you know someone sounds the same as you looks the same as you this that and the other you know they're safe or you know they're going to do certain mm. things and that's very important in regards to like accents and stuff like that because i am i i flip between accents i think um, you probably have during the podcast a bit probably bit. probably uh, I, I don't doubt it i don't do it intentionally either my my dad is really bad at mirroring accents. So imagine imagine my dad sounds a bit like this, and he, he's you know, and then he'll try and do an accent of whoever he's talking to, <laughs> but it will still be a bad Londoner uh, <laughs> doing doing a northern accent. Like he's lived up north for years, um, because I said that's where I was raised, and um, he will always go into the chippy and try and do like a Lancashire northern accent. And I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> My brother, who actually sounds like this, we're very strange. We're very strange, me and Ben. Because uh, I sound I sound like this, and he sounds like this. So we we, <laughs> we look we look the same. It's it's mental how impression like impressions are immediately a thing that impress people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you can do impressions, 
because I can't do impressions, but I'm st- uh, one of the things I really want to do a joke about is how quick people like impressions are to impress people, especially like animal impressions. Like if you can do a cracking animal, no matter <laughs> what it is, people are like all we are is toddlers. Yeah, that can, are allowed to drink. That's yeah. all. That's all we are. If you can make an owl noise at a house party, job is a good one. Yeah. But it, it, with with the accent thing, it's it's a bit of classism as well. It's that notion of well, you're thick because you sound like I this. hate that. And it is, it's, it's, it's inherent, uh, kind of classism, uh, the talk about like Britain, um, people have phone voices, don't they? Hello, James, them speaking, how may oh, I help you? Just, I tried to change my accent and I'm just like this. I speak, I speak like this. Customers are on the phone. Uh, good afternoon, Birmingham, Birmingham company. It changes a little bit just so they can understand me. Cause if I go really quickly, people don't understand my voice, which is totally fine. I just slow it down a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I don't necessarily change my accent. I change the pace of it, just so people can understand my voice a little bit better. But yeah, I get, I, I understand. But yeah, I don't agree with it necessarily. My just, my just flicks all over the gaff. To be honest, I think um, I'm gonna will be training to become a teacher as I said at the beginning I think I will have to have my neutral accent. But in general, it's kind of like uh, my accent goes from like neutral to slightly North London to a little bit. A little bit of um uh, of a uh, where are you from exactly? What is, is the central? Are you Czech? Are you Polish? Yeah, I worked with a guy who's lived in Birmingham all his life. Sounds nothing like a bummer. And I was just like, where are you from? <laughs> it, it can it can happen, and you know the the these the um uh, the kind of the the judge judgment factor, but um yeah, I just love I love I really in, uh, I'm the antithesis of of that notion that you know accents imply stupidity i think accents are great i love doing accents one of my favorite things to do is like throw my voice do a lancashire yeah. Or, yeah like my mum my mom she is a scouser she uh, my granddad's from toxteth like and being able to and i know it's not the best scouse accent but to be able to put I mean, it's this not the on, worst one ever right? uh, either do you know what i mean yeah it's just like i've heard scouse people that sound irish oh yeah, 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 yeah so i get confused between the scouse and irish accent all the fucking time I don't know why, because I know they're very different people. But again, it's great just to mess with my grandfather as well. I was like, "Get out, granddad!" He's like, "You don't sound like that." I'm like, "No, I don't." <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, it, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy um, how one little thing, and that's a perfect example um, that we've kind of touched upon, like accents or regionalism, can have so many like different implications. And so many things that affect life in general. Well, in a weird way, it keeps me engaged. I like listening to people with accents because I'm not that I ignore people. Um, if you have an accent, I'm 100% clued into what you're saying. Maybe from a place of, oh, they speak in a different tone to me or accents. So I have to listen to them a bit more. But I'm fully engaged with people with accents. People find uh, it's strange. It moves on a little bit, but people find accents very attractive. Mm. Do you have that? Do you have that one accent? I was talking to some friends, mutual friends of ours, and they were, they were just saying, "I both said, oh, when a girl has an Irish accent." Oh yeah, I, I, I was like, I, when I went to Dublin, I was just happy. So, <laughs> I don't know what it is about an Irish accent. I just like it. I'm a, quite a fan of gingers as well. So a ginger <laughs> Irish bird. Sorry to just. Um, Used the derogatory term for bird, but I'd mean it in a nice way. Um, again, it's the form of delivery. If I said it, all right, love, uh, yeah, that's the word. But when I say bird, I mean it from a nice, particular place. I don't know where I've picked it up from. But weirdly, Americans quite quite like the Brummy accent. Y- Yanks love the English accent. Yeah, but no one speaks like that. The, they have the English accent they do, no one really speaks like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they all go, what are what? You like, well, You've watched one episode of, like, The Only Way is Essex. Maybe some, um, what, what's that one with all the posh people? Maiden Chelsea? Maiden Chelsea, yeah, I used to watch that quite a bit. Actually. And, um, um you, you've, you've judged, again, you've judged an entire nation that's accent changes almost every 20 miles. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah. yeah, every American person, male and female, I've met. I've met quite a few actually. I've been quite. I mean, I suppose you do in the bar trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people all over the shop. Um, they are quite enamoured by the Brummie accent, so I'm a bit shocked by that. Take it, take it. Oh no, mind. don't worry, I do. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, T- to be honest, um, it's a it's a dirty word to bring up in Birmingham, but um, oh, what's that? Um, uh, Cillian Murphy TV show about the Brummies. Cillian. 
Yeah, Killy Murphy. Uh, Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. That's done. Uh, I think that's done some. Uh, probably done some good globally. For done the, some sort of for it, the yeah. Brummie accent. I like it because there's a, a, a Cockney Jew in it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, I, yeah. I finally feel represented. <laughs> 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 oh. Finally, TV for me. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> uh, I was going to mention something. I can't, I can't remember the next tangent that was going on. What were we talking about? Accents. Ac oh, the other accent I really quite enamoured by is the Aussie accent. I've always been quite enamoured by the Aussie accent. Big fan of neighbours. So mention <laughs> as often as possible. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think Kylie was like my second love of my life. Um, purely through watching reruns of Neighbours when I was a child. My first love was... Um, Kelly Kapowski from Saved by the Bell. He started Saved by the Bell quite a bit when I was younger. Yeah. I think mine was uh, Hilary Duff. I'll tell you that, yeah. yeah. Um, what, was, what was the programme she was in? I couldn't couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you, but I... I, I That's going to bug me now. I remember it's Nickelodeon, isn't it? I think, it was, I think she was on or Nickelodeon. Or Disney, one of the... Oh, no, she was on Disney Channel, yeah. Uh, Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie there McGuire, we are. that's it. There we are, it's in there somewhere. No, I'll tell you that. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I think that was it, yeah, Carla Minogue and uh, I think her name's Tiffany Horton who played uh, um, Kelly Kapowska. You've definitely Googled that before. Yeah, because I was like, I don't, just call her, cause I don't just want to call her her character's name. I think that's quite rude. She's obviously yeah, she's obviously not just played Kelly Kapowska in her life. She's more than a... Yeah, she's more than a character. You know what I mean? Like Killian Murphy, he's not just Tommy Shelby. He's also um, Dr. Jonathan Crane. Uh, the scarecrow from yes Batman. he is thank you <laughs> um, did you find it how was moving a lot did you did it how, has it shaped you in any way oh, I think it definitely has um, it's interesting uh, I've had a lot of conversations recently about this touching on these topics um, I'm moving again I'm going down to Bristol I don't know where I'm definitely be, paradise, that, it, 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 it is it's only £25 to get back up return so I, you're going to see my face a lot well I'm coming down anyway yeah. I, my main football team is Yeovil Town up the Glovers um, which is how long on the train from Bristol like, probably like half an hour half an hour yeah, yeah. so it's to get to Yeovil I'd have to go through Bristol anyway but it's the trek back I, I can't really do it. I mean you could do it in a day if I'm hard pressed but I'm just going to book a weekend off work and then... Kip on my sofa. Kip on your sofa. And then go back to the Sunday morning and probably go to work for some discounted beer. Um, that sounds sounds a decent plan. Look, I have, like I was speaking to my our mutual friend on the train. I've fallen on my feet at the minute. Like, I love my new job. It's Because I was going to leave hospitality. I was gonna, I've been offered some quite lucrative sales positions. Uh, but I'd been stuck behind a desk. And that's not me. Like... My new boss was, wasn't surprised that I did stand up and wasn't surprised that I have a podcast because I don't shut the fuck up. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm very, I, doing this, I've learned to let people speak. Obviously, I interrupt, but I get make sure I get it, segue back into the conversation the way I was, purely because I might forget what I wanted to say. It obviously, adds to the conversation. Um, but yeah, she wasn't surprised at all. So I'm falling that it's a fucking lovely place to work. It's um I've had a lot of people and this is the, so and this this goes back to moving around a lot like um uh, this current move is very much um not forced but a product of lockdown which mm. caused everyone to just stop. In general, when I first started moving, you know, I was moving to Germany on my own, living abroad on your own. It was very scary, and you, you are it is without a doubt. Uh, but it, it's helped a lot of a lot of what I've done is helped me gain and grow as a person which sounds very cliched but it just is the way it is and it helps you i always think and this is um i was talking to a friend about in your 20s you spend a lot of time and you in the 30s and 40s but you spend a lot of time trying to formulate and be comfortable in your own skin and moving around helped me go from if you'd see me at 21 uh like i'd be the same I don't think I would be the same person. No. Uh, I am far more confident, outgoing. I was quite a sheep when I was 21. Yeah. I used to follow a certain group of friends and I used to follow what they did. I mean, I had my own interests and stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily vocalise them, but I wouldn't focus on them. Do you know what I mean? Probably I, because of the group of friends I was with. Because back then, when you're trying to find yourself, you want to feel comfortable. And you want to be, if you're in a group of friends, you want to... Be like them so you hold on to them and then because if obviously if they're gone 
you were a bit lost, didn't you? Yeah. But yeah, for me, for me, moving has really just helped me grow. Mm. It made me very comfortable with all the decisions I kind of make now. Because it's interesting you say you follow. I for the past two weeks, three weeks, you know, I've been in Birmingham and I'm doing some work um, as things in the service industry, um, or I'm doing some volunteer stuff. I'm gonna stop you for a second. Yeah. Can we hear that beep? Yeah. I can. Why every podcast I do? Like, genuinely, if you go through it, there's a noise in every fucking podcast I do. And I'm just like, usually it's a police car. Obviously, we're in a soundproof, soundproof, obviously, uh, hyphenated commas. Um, yeah, there's always a sound. So always I just, a I, sound. Always a sound. Always a sound that I, I'm not really bothered about. It's now yeah. a feature. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is the thing. Like, you know, when podcasts get to like the 100th episode, like, and they do like, Compilations. I'm just going to put the compilations of random fucking random, random, random shit and then me that... telling this story, me saying this statement over and over again. Carry on. Sorry, I just because I thought I heard it four or five times. I was thinking, am I hearing this myself? We should have said no. We should have just <laughs> yeah, said no. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> we can't hear anything, Joe. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, it's you know. So moving around has been been very important. Um, so I don't I don't worry, worry about it anymore. It's not really a thing, mainly because I kind of. I kind of do, not what I want, but I do... Uh, within reason, obviously. Within reason. Yeah. And the past couple of weeks, I've very much felt like I've been like everything, because we've come from such a a mad situation, mm. and now everything is beginning to, you know, I'm doing some volunteer work at a bar, uh, and that keeps me, gets me out of the house, keeps me going. Um, I'm seeing people begin to, as stuff is opening up. Um, and I'm as like, we are today. I'm, I'm falling on my feet a little mm. bit. And I'm Wait, like, it? But, jobs but, are good. Have we? Or is it just because things are normal again and we've spent a year and a half inside? I think I think just take it. At my... Oh no, I'm taking it as it. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, 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 um, I'm one. I take the good times and use them as much as possible. Yeah, I, I think maybe, you know, maybe because I think you, you're right, you're going from such a low point mm. to, to now. Maybe just a normal point. And yeah, it feels but, like a high. But but... Yeah, but it is high because of where we've come from. Yeah. Like, I, again, I'm speaking to a mutual friend of ours. Um, I can't wait. Cinemas are open today. Mm. And I'm just going, because I have most Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays off, I'm just going to go on an afternoon on my own. Because I, I did that anyway. Because I, I mean, I don't mind a packed cinema. I know there's gonna, obviously going to be social distancing for the next month or so. Um, but I used to go on an afternoon anyway, at like two o'clock and see that film. Because I knew I was going to get a ticket. I knew it wouldn't be busy. Get me pick a mix. Get me mix slushy. Mix slush puppy. I'm fucking sorted. I can't wait to do that again. It's just doing... Um... It's just, yeah, just doing normal stuff. I, I was, as I said, I spent most of the lockdown with my family. It's all with my family. I was either with my parents up north. That's the first time I've been home for years and years and years for that amount of time. Or I was down with my uncle in um, a place called Pinner, which is in North London, very North I've been London. To Pinner, I think. Um, and uh, so I was there and um, just having independence and freedom mm. is, is, is just a win for me, which previously, you know. A man who's bounced around Europe and and lived where pretty much, you know, followed his academic path and tried to do as much there. For this now to be like, yeah, it's a bit surreal, mm. but it, it's it's good. It's 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 good. It is. Should we talk a little bit about football? Yeah, I'm always going to talk about football. So am I. Like it's my in for people. Well, it's, it's my like I follow a lot of different sports, and it's my in because even with I mean, not necessarily for women. For men, uh, to be fair, on a whole, I find it easier to talk to women because they will talk about anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But with a man, you have to have that that masculine thing where you need to. You all, everybody's got their guard up, and you need to like break down that guard. It's always football. It's lovely. Because um, we we bonded. We first met because you were a Yeovil fan. Yeah. Well, I first met you, and you were wearing that streak of piss. How fucking dare you? How <laughs> you dare streak, you? You were, that... you, were that... <laughs> you were that streak of piss. I meet I meet you for the first time. I know you weren't. Were you wearing a streak of piss? No. Probably. Oh, no, you might have been wearing your Chef Shanko shirt. Oh, yeah. You might, would, yeah. Which is still yellow. Still the same colour, but I would never disgrace that man <laughs> by calling a t-shirt with his face on a streak of piss because that man is the sole reason why I followed Dynamo Kiev or Dynamo Kiev, as you would say. It's Dynamo, 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 yeah, I believe. Some places are Dynamo, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would never disgrace that man. Love him, honey, at some point. Uh, Andre. Andre. Andre or Andre? Andre. 
Andre. Andre. Andre, I Andre, Andre like Shevchenko. Yeah, if you are out there, please. Um, be, I'll be in touch. Um, but then you famously, we famously support some of the famous. Say, I say famous. It's just between me and you. Yeah. <laughs> but this is how we bonded because we didn't, like I said, we didn't really speak before lockdowns. And then I had your, I got your phone number off our mutual friend, Little Joey, because I wanted to send you a text about. Was it the Classica? Yeah, it was the Classica. Was it the Classica? Yeah. I'm a Munich fan. He's a Dortmund fan. And we was it when we won? Was it one nil? Yes. Was it, was it, it wasn't the Kimmich goal. No, it was no, a Lewandowski goal. Yeah, it was Lewandowski goal. I just broke good. I don't know how I feel about that, cause I'm, but you know, as you know, I'm a big good Muller fan. He's in every fantasy eleven that I've ever made, as he should be for most people. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I feel about him breaking good's record, but we'll digress. So yeah, the first time we met, I did that because I, like, I need to listen. I need to I need to take the piss here and then it then it so because that was like was that before the first lockdown it must before, have been before first lockdown yeah, which was, yeah. I was in a packed pub <laughs> <laughs> I was in a busy pub I, was, I, there was, I distinctly remember people standing at a bar uh, I remember those days that's gonna be it's gonna be really weird to date but it's gonna be like a weird date thing in it like yeah I it, it was before that because I remember people standing at a bar <laughs> um so yeah, I had to do it because I thought I'm going to take the piss here. I don't know anybody. Which I bet I'm a big baseball fan. I don't really know anybody else that follows baseball. And every American football fan I've ever met never supported my team. I always seem to run into fucking Green Bay Packer fans. No, I can't stand. I'm a Steelers fan. Yeah, so. Steelers are fine. Um, I should have been a Steelers fan. My first Super Bowl I watched Steelers won. Uh, it like yeah, Rufflesburg. Maybe 05. It, you, you're looking at 05, I yeah, think. 05, my, my data's are terrible. So if anyone's a huge NFL fan and is shouting at the... Yeah, so, I think it's 05. I am sorry. It's but, 05, uh, 06, I think. But then Seahawks were around that time as well. They won it that, around then as well. Um, so yeah, I just run into fucking Green Bay Packer fans all the time and I'm just like, fuck you. Go away. Um, so yeah, we've bonded over the fact that we both hate each other. Every... Um, Three or four Saturdays every year, don't we? Yeah, it's 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 also nice to have. I I I consider myself a football nerd. So oh, I love it. I will watch. I got up over the lockdowns and watched A League Australian A. Yeah, I'm a I know massive, you're. A... I'm a, now a massive Wellington Phoenix fan. I know you. And see... We're actually playing well this season. I'm fucking oh, yes. I have a team in almost every Eastern European country. And I'll give you the reason why I support each team. There is there's gen always genuine reasons. And, you know, you support certain teams more or less. Or less um, than, but I, I c couldn't get into A-League a at all. But, yeah, my entire, like, because my football, I was raised up north and I was, like, one of two Arsenal fans. One of the many things that made secondary school a little bit harder uh, for James was... You've been a Jewish Arsenal fan. Uh, with this accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone sounds like this and you're like, you're posh fuck. I'm like, I'm not posh. <laughs> leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Um, I've got nothing left. <laughs> but it, it, it's so... So I just took it as... Because there is that. that You are completely right when you meet... And it's a great tool when you meet uh, like the kids my just to chat football mm. but i always consider my love of football to almost be on the nerd level yeah but no I'm, also, I'm obsessed sometimes i'm also a massive nerd anyway yeah, yeah. and so football to me is just an extension of that so i i, I followed arsenal i'm third generation of arsenal fan but then dortmund was because i had some german kids in my school and they were schalke fans and i was like well fuck schalke yeah I'll fuck support. schalke I'll support Dortmund, so I've followed them for about 30 years. been relegated now. They have. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I'm weird with my Bundesliga. I dislike certain teams. Like, I don't know why I dislike Schalke. I mean, we all dislike Leipzig. We all dislike Leipzig. We all dislike Leipzig. I was talking to a guy at work about this. We all dislike Leipzig. Um, I dislike Schalke. Big fan of Union Berlin, just because the underdog status. Yeah. Who else do I really like? I hate Hoffenheim. I don't really like Hoffenheim. I've always had a thing with Hertha as well. Hertha Berlin, Hertha Berlin have always, purely because they, when I've done career modes on FIFA, they've always <laughs> beat me. Like I, I've always, I've not, I don't comfortably win all the time. Obviously, I play on a difficulty that challenges me because there's no point playing video games if you don't challenge yourself. But Hertha were always, always beat, like always snidey little goals and shit. And I'm thinking, nah, I don't like oh, it. Oh, the malicious nature of FIFA seeping into the real world. Mm. I think, yeah, and then. Then yeah, I've uh, 
we've kind of I've bullied you into supporting some more Eastern well, European teams. The, the, well, the, 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 one thing, the one thing that really got me with it is that we both found out we support CSK and Sofia. Yeah, 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 and I support them because my mum and dad went on went on holiday to Bulgaria. Like, bring me back a local shirt because, like, I need to like I was just purely interested. Because at this point, I only really followed Jova and Munich because I needed a European side more than anything. Because, I mean, I've always said this. If you if you will ever get to the Premier League, you won't hear me from me for a year. Because I will just be, I'll I'll do any I will go to as many games as possible. You will see me crawling out of pubs every Saturday evening. Like I will be lost to this earth for a good <laughs> year. And if we ever got into Europe, it'd be the fucking same. Just in Europe, it's just in, just on the continent. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they brought me back, and it was a lovely shirt. It was that. I don't know if it was check. I don't know if it was um, checkered. It might have been diamond, you know. The, it was like a really cool. I can't picture it somewhere. I probably sent it to you. It was just a really cool kit, and I had no idea who said. I'd have no. I had no idea of the history really, because I just asked for a local show. And then us talking about football was like, oh, dude, we follow the same show, follow the same team. And you got me into part of Zambo grade. Found out you were a Shakhtar fan. Didn't really like Shakhtar, so I was like, ah. Eh. I'm going to follow Kiev. I will, I will caveat the, the other. So I'm a big part of Zan Pel, Belgrade fan. Obviously, I lived in Belgrade for a period of time. Um, and I was like, well, Savannah and Zvezda, Red Star Belgrade, they're like the biggest club. Um, and they got following outside Serbia. And I was like, well, that was I, the I, I'm going to follow. Oh, yeah. yeah. That is, um, uh, so it's like a, like, white lines on them. Uh, it looks on like a, my old, like, you know, like mid-90s wallpaper. It is very mid nineties, or, yeah. or or it wouldn't be red, It'd or be like a black bus, and white, or a bus seat. Yeah, a bus seat. It's nice though, but a nice bus. Seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's just red and white. Where yeah, bus seat would be in more Tudor colours. Sorry I, again. I am. I always. So I, I th I'd say my my three other than Dortmund and Arsenal, my three major teams that I, I kind of love. How do you split? Because my dad used to uh, works in Croatia. We got very again that noise. Fuck off. <laughs> um, sorry. Oh my, my, uh, you invited me. Here. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, my dad, like we've had a real affinity with the, the country. I, I love, I love the country. Uh, Partizan and then um, Spartak Moscow. Uh, but with Shakhtar, I, I follow them because they're my friend Artur's team, and they had a guy play for them called Dario Surna, who was a, a Croatian international, and he's just he was just one of my favourites. And it was then, a bell. Yeah. Was, you had it, a, was it like when we were a bit younger? Yeah. 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 I, like, then you had just crazy play. You have all sorts of players that come from Shakhtar. Um, Fernandinho. Fernandinho. Uh, Bernard. William used to play for them at one point, but he went to... Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. 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 Raz Van Rat was my favourite one. The yeah, Romanian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that name. Who went to... Uh, but then actually, um, my, my Ukrainian team is Chinomorets Odessa. Yeah, Black Sea Odessa. Because that is, again... A long, long time, long time ago, where my my family came from, we we believe as, mm. as far as we know. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm more of a Chinamorets fan, but um, yeah, I'd say Spartak. I've they were the first, so much like you with CSKA and Sofia, Spartak were like the first team when I was really getting into football. Like I was really not just watching Arsenal or Dortmund. I was like, no, I want to, I want to view it like I want to understand the tactics of the games. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to scout. I want to be able to do all this stuff because I found enjoyment out of it. I was like, right, I'm going to watch um, some Russian football, which I think is pretty interesting. Uh, and I was like, oh, Spartak, it's the workers' club. And since then, yeah, I've followed them for about 10 years now. And um, they're my... And I love the banter on Twitter. It's so good from the Spartak English admin. If you've not if you've not come across it, have a flick through. If you enjoy your football, whenever something major goes on in the world, there's always the Spartak English admin just goading goading people <laughs> it's just like they messaged with the super league thing they're like arsenal chelsea da, 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 fans if you want a team with integrity come support spartak oh yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and it's just like oh, i well, just i love that side of twitter like Yovel, i don't know if it's our current but he was quite a young lad like he he did stuff like that it's just entertainment does he get your name out there yeah it's it's and like for teams like yovel because the other thing um I remember that the first chat we had about um, the Oval Town. You were surprised, I think, because I've been to a lot of Morecambe games. Yeah, yeah, Morecambe. Yeah, I've felt like I. 
if I'm stuck for a bet, because I only have a bet every month or so, I will put money on Morecambe. Morecambe. That's quite a lot of Morecambe. Where am I? So, yeah, as I said, I grew up up north and they were just the local club and they were really, I will like shout out Morecambe Football Club for whatever. If, if, if someone likes their football, just go follow them. They're the most like family team. Um, like we go there and we sat, me and my dad sound like this. Uh, and there's absolutely no issues. There's no like, and we've always had a lovely time. It's just 22 lads getting on the pitch, mm. kicking the living shit out of it. Proper, mm. fo proper, oh, that's proper football. I'll, I'll um, love non-league football. The, you've got the ultras behind, and the, there's about 15 of them. Mm. And I've got <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> like, chanting still. Like, it, it's exactly what football... If I, I felt really bad. I once My last long-term girlfriend had never been to a football game before, and I foolishly took her to Everton versus How You Split, because I really wanted to see How You Split. Mm. Uh, and we sat with the Everton fans because I could only get tickets there and, you know, I'm not wearing them. And the two geezers next to us, one was really, you know, one was shouting throughout and this, that, and the other. But the other one was incredibly racist throughout yeah. the entire thing. And she sat there and she was like, oh, well, I didn't, she was like, I'm pleased that I went and I'm happy that we did something you like, but uh, she didn't, she didn't enjoy it. Yeah. But Morecambe, and I assume it's the same with Yeovil, when you go to the small town ones. Oh, mate. It's, it's so much more like you have a pie, you have a pint before the game. It's so much more of a community atmosphere, mm. um, which is what really football is. It's always been to me. It's about community. Yeah, like when I went to Wrexham, I got the train back and I sat down and then three Wrexham fans sat around me. And I jokingly said, oh, lads, I think I've got the wrong seat. And I had my scarf on. And they looked at me a bit confused and I pulled my scarf out of it. I was like, oh, we had a nice half a day with... Obviously, they weren't coming back to Birmingham. They lived just outside Wrexham, so they were three or four stops down. But we had a nice chat about the game. And it's lovely. It's just so nice. Because, like, when we were in League Two, we brought relegation every year. It's tense times throughout the year, because you always think you're going down. Now, we're, like, mid-table non-league team. Could If we get bring a few players in, we could get promoted. But I just quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy it. Because not, not that I don't enjoy pressure, it's just... I mean, I'm still pissed off when we lose because it's the whole point of supporting a football team. Yeah, yeah. Well, not the whole point, but you know what? You want to support a successful team. But yeah, like, I go to Sully Hall every year. Try to, obviously. Not this year. Um, that's counties down the road. It's just a nice community atmosphere. And like you say, it's the same. Like, people are more enamoured by my accent down there because obviously they're all classic Somerset. Again, I won't ridicule them because they are my own fans. Um, Somerset. Somerset. That was terrible. Um, but yeah, I just can't do accents. So, like, they go, "Are you really a Yeovil fan? Because you, you obviously a Brummie." I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I supported them since I was like fourteen, fifteen. I was raised a Villa fan, but my dad being more of a rugby fan, I never really felt like a football fan. I was intrigued by football because obviously it's fucking everywhere. You can't get rid of it. Um, and that sort of fed into my nerdist attitude with football because I just like knowing stuff about football. Yeah. Like I can watch Premier League years and watch it for a couple of seconds and know what year it is. Within, it might not be, like say if the season's 05, 06, I might say 2006, but it might be season 06, 07. So it's still around this, I do years instead of actual seasons because the way the seasons work, obviously these are over two different years, technically. It is having that knowledge and it, it, it's again, it's a, I always find football a great outlet. I, I've said it before um, previously, you know, I spent a lot of time in academia. I learned a lot of stuff that is very niche, quite important, but no one really wants to talk about because it's pretty depressing or it's pretty, you know, it can be quite intense. Or, That's what I like reading. Uh, yeah, or it could be quite boring. But with football, when you, you've got that knowledge, you like, I'm the first, I love... I'm the, my my family, uh, all the Gooners in my family, and then obviously because my mum's a scouser, my brother's a Liverpool fan, and her, her entire side of Liverpool fans. They all go to me whenever there's like an odd signing from somewhere. We've been linked to someone from Ukraine. Well, when and Liverpool, I'm like, Liverpool signed that um, defender from Timikas. Timikas from Schalke. No, no, it wasn't from Schalke. Uh, was uh, the guy that signed from I'm Schalke. I'm thinking of, uh, uh, from Schalke, my tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, we were surprised how, like he, how that agent got him. They moved to Shel uh, to Liverpool from Schalke, who were in the drop zone, and people were just people around me. Oh, you're talking about the one this year? Yeah, yeah, um, this year. Kabak. Kabak, that year, yeah. So when he got, like, that, when him as a defender got that transfer to Liverpool, we were both like, who the fuck is this man's agent? 
Yeah. He's not, I know he's a youngish player, but obviously if you're in the drop zone of the Bundesliga, very rarely would you move to the Premier League champions. It's been as... I mean, he is... That that has obviously been done through data because I've, yeah. I saw a couple of Schalke games with him play and, you know, he looked a bit of a man mountain mm. next to Sané. Um, but, yeah, it, it's... And for... Schalke are not a well-run club and I find it hilarious. But on, in the general, I just like being the font of knowledge when people are like, oh, who is this? Like Tim, uh, like Tim Kass, who came from... Um, uh, yeah, he was Olympiakos. And, uh, you know, I'd seen him a couple of times play um, against Arsenal. Uh, I'd seen him play against AEK Athens, who I keep an eye on in Greece. Yeah, I don't think I've got a Greek team. Um, I, think I think I've followed too many, to be honest. There is never too many. Yeah, there is never too many. Never too many. I've got well, massive... Two, yeah, two years ago, I only followed two. Now I follow the Oval Munich, Hibs. Hibs are my partial team. Um, Stahl Bucharest from Romania. Because I, I followed Stahl anyway, because one of, my, one of the chefs I used to work with when I was at college, and the lecturers, he played for the youth team. Oh. He was in the youth team when they won the old European Cup. Really? Yeah, I don't think he... I think one of his mates had to make the bench just because someone was injured or for one of the European Cup games. I can't remember if it was the final. It's got 10 years ago before, since, uh, since I was told this. But yeah, he played for the youth team. And then, obviously, the famous story, we all get injured and became a chef. So yeah, I followed Sta Stauer. Uh, and you split, sort of, through you. So it's KA, Sophia, big one, I love that. Sparta, Prague, Sparta. we don't like. We don't, uh, we are, uh, yeah, we don't like we don't, Slavia. Yeah, purely because they are, well, everybody knows they have racist players now, but yeah. before that we didn't like them anyway. And racist we, fans, it would yeah. appear. We, 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 were, we were hipster haters on Slavia Prague. We hated them before it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Slavia Prague. Uh, Wellington Phoenix, a massive Wellington Phoenix fan. Yeah. I can't believe I, I don't know why I've done this. I know why. I know exactly why I did this. Because Gary Hooper, like, for, for some reason, I attached myself to the former Sheffield Wednesday striker, Gary Hooper. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know why I did this. Like, it was, it, it, even when he was back at Norwich as well, I, I just became enamoured by this man. Because he's the only player to score in the Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two, League One and League Two for Scunthorpe, I do believe. Champions League, Europa League. I don't think he scored in the World FA Cup, League Cup. I think he's the only player to, at the time anyway. I was going to say, Jamie do... Vardy must be knocking on the door, yeah, but I don't think he's played knock. in the Europa League, so... No, not yet. He would have been, yeah. Might be next season. Oh, well, if Leicester really, really a mm. choke, but... So, yeah, Gary Hooper. It was a quiz question, and it's Gary Hooper, and I just... I, the running joke I used to have that Gary Hooper was the best player I've ever seen. I used to just... If he was like when I used to go down the blues a bit, if he was playing, I used to put him on the score. And much to the dissatisfaction of my uh, blues fans' friends. Um, so yeah, I became enamoured with Gary Hooper. I don't know why I did it. I do it for the laugh, innit? Like, I'm obsessed with Djibouti as well, the small African country. Yeah. I want to go to Djibouti purely because it sounds fun to say. It's. Uh, it... <laughs> The, log the, the thing is, the logic is there. I'm not saying it's good logic. No, it's not like, no. Like, I imagine if I went to Djibouti and someone asked me why I'm here, I was like, oh, I just like the sound of your name of your country. They've been quite, I mean, I don't know what the, I don't even know what the political situation is. Or Wear, uh, wearing your Gary Hooper t-shirt. Yeah, Gary Hooper t-shirt. Yeah, I became enamoured with that man. And then I found out he moved to Wellington, Phoenix, and um, Stephen Taylor, the former Newcastle captain, was also re-signed this season. Um, and yeah, I watched a really good documentary on um, YouTube. He um, also got a really good one about Stour. Mm. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's Joe.co.uk, but it's football something. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going full force with this because because of lockdown. Because I wasn't doing anything. Because obviously hospitality was closed. Got up a couple of times at like it wasn't that early. It was only like seven eight o'clock in the morning. Watched well into Phoenix play. This is last year though when we were a bit shit. This season, I don't. I haven't checked. I only, I've only seen scores coming. I've not checked the table. We're doing all right. Got um, he's our striker. He's playing. The, he's, he's an English lad as well. I'm gonna Google that because it's gonna piss me off. Um, but yeah, I'm enamoured by uh, Wellington Phoenix. I think that's it. Don't really follow a Spanish team. I'm a, I'm a fake Madrid fan. But again, I don't really like the way the club would run. So oh, I thought I thought. Oh, ASA Roma as well. Big Roma fan. Roma, uh, you see, I really start. My brother's really into AC Milan. He's a big AC Milan fan. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I struggle with it, both Italian and Spanish. I watch it. I think it's, it's good football. But David Ball. David yeah. Ball. Yeah, he used to play for somebody. Who's David Ball? He used to play for. Statistically, he would have played for somebody. Yes. He was nominated for the Puskas Award. I don't know where he where he was what? at. He played for Man City. Man City, Swindon, Peterborough, Rochdale, <laughs> Fleetwood, Fort Fleetwood Town, uh, Rotherham. Rotherham is where I know him from. Um, yeah, David Ball, lad, and our former youth product. Sarpreet Singh is now at the Munich B team, which is quite nice. Yeah. Much um, excitement. Much excitement. It's all, all the excitement. What 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 they've actually got more of an insight to is ninety nine percent of our conversations, which yeah, is yeah. which is just discussing literally is just discussing football. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice outlet, isn't it? Going back to your uh sorry, that was a very swift that was a very like right angled not even a right that was like a quick U turn uh tangent there. Go back to you, like your academia. What is the most random thing you know that most people wouldn't care about? I love shit like that. Oh, uh, you see, I don't, I don't have, I don't have fun, fun facts. So I do my fact first. No, you do fact uh, your facts. My facts. The fact I told you the other day, I can't remember the uh, guy's name, but you tell yours first. I'll, I'll I've got to Google it. I've got a good amount. I've got the thing with with history is, and what I I studied in history is, uh, I looked at um, Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. uh, basically from 1943 to 2010 uh, my master's was a little uh, my bachelor's was a little older so 43 and then I did the break of use library in the 90s for my master's and my PhD topic mainly focuses on Serbia and stuff like that um, so that's why I was living in Serbia uh, I stopped doing my PhD mainly because it's very expensive mm. and I could not get funding um, so you don't really end up, this is the thing when you end up doing um doing stuff like this it's a uh, it's not really like um, oh, disappointing man enjoyable Sorry. not you no I was just having a quick google <laughs> of the person I wanted to talk about it's not really like enjoyable um, um like stats it's not like I don't go on a date and say oh I did this but I don't <laughs> <laughs> I, used, I used to study genocide uh, um, but I do I do have a couple of stories because because I'm going into teaching I do I really do believe that you can be engaged in history there's so much that has happened you'll find something that, you know. well, I'm currently reading a book that you recommended me about the Balkans and I, I explained this to somebody the other day I was like why are you reading this book because like, I never learned about it and they're like so you'll pick, you've, you've used you've selected the driest piece of it because it's very it's not I mean, it's very dry in terms of reading you picked the driest book you could about the Balkans from, is it 1802, 1804 to 2012? 2012, 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a good, oh, fuck me, it's hard. Um, and it's hard to get into, but I'm enjoying it. So carry on. The, the, thing, the thing of it is, is you asked an academic to, uh, <laughs> to select an academic book. But, but and, and I also think, like, I think... On the flip side, you make a good point of how it can be incredibly dry, but there are some, like, within history, there's some really good stories. Mm -hmm. Like, um, the age old thing is Geschichte in German means story and history, you know. And um, so, my favorite, uh, I've got a couple of favorite ones. There's, um, and these are, I'll very briefly tell them. There's um, uh, the story about um, the delegation of uh, samurai who decided to. Um, visit the Pope because they asked well who is the leader of Europe and it was kind of said, the Pope mm. and so they, they went off but instead of going through mainland they decided to go via Mexico and that way so the Pacific okay yeah, sorry I had to visualise that for a second uh, and Jesus Christ. they ended up having an argument with a conquistador a Spanish um, yeah. in a pub in a bar uh, what year was this? Um, now I'm desperate to remember. <laughs> I just you put me really on... sounded like fucking um, Robin Williams' character from Jumanji there. Like, yeah. What year is this? What year is this? <laughs> you know, I, asked... I asked that question. All... I think I asked it to you as well. Like, because I like history and I like, I like I'm one of those. Ac I can't do academia, but I love reading. So yeah. I'm just like, what year is this? I'm like a living meme. Do you know? I I, I can't remember. But however, this was told to me by a, a good friend who's still a PhD student. Um, and so oh, I would hes hesitate to guess. But the wonderful thing about it is, is this the samurai had an argument with the con conquistador ended up having his head cut off. And the only reason we know about it is because a um, Mayan, Azte Aztec 
um, individual. Aztec. Yeah, because I've um, just read a book. I've just read a book. And it's, it's was like, there? Yeah, con the Spanish made contact with the Aztecs, I do believe. Mine was further up. Uh, a nobility, well, the nobility were there mm -hmm. anyway. And it's this notion that these three peoples, the Spanish, the Samurai, how we think in history that they would never interact. Uh, or that, that, that for, we, we learn history in like bubbles. And that, 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 but actually, everything is connected. My other favorite one is anyone ever, ever heard about the um, Russian writer Pushkin? First name? Um, oh, now you're asking. Probably. Um, so, I, don't know, I don't really know George uh, Alexander. Yeah. Alexander Pushkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his great grandfather uh, on his mother's side, or great great grandfather, but I believe it's his great grandfather, his mother's side, came from Central Africa and was black. And ended up being made a slave in the Ottoman um, court, and then was taken. This is this is the story. This is very much. So a, this would have been. I know it probably would have been pre because the Ottoman Empire was around for a long time. Yeah, right? so we're, we're we're talking here for sixteen hundreds, mm. um, and so they 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 he was spotted by a Russian delegate in the Ottoman, taken to the the Tsar. Said, "I give you this." The Tsar, as the stories goes, um, gave him his freedom instantly invited him into the royal household and gave him a title and so you have once again this notion that that russian history is not often associated with the history of africa no um there is not the slave trade there is not the, the, the not directly no i mean i imagine they benefit from the slave trade but not directly like the, they weren't there's not the link yeah, as yeah, it yeah. were um but once again you see here how two bits of history black history and russian history they interact, and so I love stories like that. So I don't have, as you said, facts that will like. Uh, I don't one that's weird. Sorry to interrupt. But go on. I think, from what we know now, the pyramids were closer to the the dinosaurs than now. So the pyramids were made closer to when the dinosaurs were around than now. Because they're obviously pre. I think they're definitely pre Christ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, obviously. well. Yeah. So yeah, the. Dinosaur, or maybe I think it was, yeah, technically Woolly Mouse was still about when, yes, but obviously in North America. So I know, I know there's that age old thing with um, Cleopatra, like the the pyramids were already like a couple of thousand mm. years old and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So when and we think, and that's again, facts like that question how we view history because we view history as like one big globule of either. Region so Egyptian history is all just viewed as Cleopatra, all these pharaohs, but actually it's so much bigger, um, and we don't view it as interacting. You know, humanity hasn't just you know stopped to start started interacting due to globalization or due to what whatever you may view as globalization in the past hundred years. We've always done stuff. The Silk Road. The Silk Road, um, you know, running from the Far East all the way through Iran and everything. It's why we find, you know, bits of Viking stuff that's been traded mm. in the middle of mm -hmm. Iran or somewhere like this. And it's why we, we're far more connected. And I, I think for me, I like stories like that and little facts like that because it shows that history isn't what you're taught in schools or isn't how it's perceived. And it's done a lot to draw back to something we were talking about before in britain it's done a lot because we're an island and so you just think the history of britain is our little little island but it's so much more we're so much more than an island mm -hmm. and history is so much more than everything so that, that's that's how i would go otherwise i'm just talking about like genocide yeah well <laughs> like go back to go back. Yeah, like the only thing i don't know much obviously yeah, she had some contact with julius caesar and you know two things about julius caesar three things actually one, he was stabbed. Two, the, the salad isn't named after him, I don't think. No. Or he didn't invent it. No, I think And it was he a... also had a nickname for Cleopatra that meant she was really good at blowjobs. Yeah. But I can't remember that. But what I say is Suka Alamink, which is some form of Italian dialect from a comedian called Joey Diaz. Diaz. And Suka Alamink is just sucking penis. Suka is a very bad word in Russian. Yeah, yeah. Well. Suka, I, mean, I don't know. I think it's I Italian. Italian. He's Italian. Italian so, oh, no, he's Cuban, actually. But he grew up in, like, Italian New York. Uh, James will be back. But we literally have six minutes left on this booking. So we will go. James will be back before he goes back to Bristol. Because as you can tell, 
our conversation flows very well. He's like my friend. He's like Dean. Who's, if he's been on before, we just can converse about a number of topics. So yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, guys. Do I, should I say we're not recording? We're not videoing this one because it's too fucking expensive. Um, but yeah, like, comment, share with your mates, and subscribe. So see you next time, guys.